adding reliable power, and then closing our Octoprint hardware. This time on Hack 5. Hey everyone, Glitch here and welcome back to Hack 5. In the last few videos, we've been working on upgrading our monoprice 3D printer with Octoprint, an external print server. Now, if you haven't seen those videos, make sure to check them out down below because they'll provide some much needed context for this video. Now, one of the issues we were struggling with was keeping the Pi powered reliably. We were powering on a USB power brick. However, that power brick was not of sufficient power. And also it could be bumped, it could be knocked out of the wall separately at the printer, and then you have a printer with nothing guiding it. And you also then have a failed print that you need to do something about. So in this video, we'll be solving that issue by adding a buck converter to directly into our 3D printer's power system so that when you turn the printer on, it turns the Pi on. We're also going to be adding external casings so that all of our hardware is mounted to the printer a lot more positively and isn't just dangling in the breeze as it was before. This will also protect it from short circuits and so on, so let's get started. Now the parts you'll need for this video, of course, are the 3D printer with the Octoprint setup we have been working on, as well as a butt converter. Now the one I'm using in this video has current control and is technically used as a battery charging circuit. However, you don't need all this. You just need voltage adjustability, and you could even get away using a pre-adjusted circuit that is set up specifically to be a 12 volt to 5 volt regulator. I will have a few of those options linked down below. You're also going to need some filament because we're going to be 3D printing some cases. Uh, some wire, a soldering iron, and that's really it. Now there are a few other ways to do this that you don't have to open your 3D printer up. For example, you could intercept using a couple of barrel jacks the actual power coming into the printer from the power brick or 12 volt battery or however you power your printer. If you're using a 3D printer that takes AC power directly and does not have a power brick, this is probably going to be a bit more difficult and I would really advise if you don't know what you're doing to avoid opening your printer because there's going to be a live AC power supply exposed inside the 3D printer. Now it's possible to figure out where the output of that power supply is and tap into that and accomplish the same thing here. But like I said, you're now working with mains power and that's a lot more risky. So make sure you consult an expert for your specific model of printer. With that out of the way, we can get started. Like I said, open the printer up. Now find where the power comes from the barrel jack and the switch. Now in this case, you could have the Pi always be on and use a relay to switch the power to the printer. However, that's out of the scope of this particular video. If you wanna see that, we can do that later. It's a great safety mechanism to shut down the printer in case something's going wrong remotely or automatically. Now, once we've identified where the power is coming into the 3D printer, we can clip those wires and prepare our butt converter. So let's add a couple of wires to the input and the output of the butt converter so we can more easily wire it into our Pi and our printer. Personally, I prefer to solder these wires. However, you can also just use the screw terminals and that would work just as well. One note here, don't connect the butt converter to the Pi yet because we want to make sure to adjust the output and make sure it's actually putting out five volts and not like 12 volts. Or if you somehow ended up with a buck boost converter, more than 12 volts that would end up frying the Pi. So we're going to wire it up to power and take our voltmeter and twiddle these dials until we get roughly 5.1, 5.2 volts. Something a little higher than five volts won't do any harm because there is cable losses and component losses and some other stuff. And it can actually help avoid an undervolt situation. Just keep it under 5.25 volts, more or less. Once we have our voltage adjusted, we can now wire it to the Pi. Now again, you can avoid soldering here by either using a micro USB cable and connecting to the micro USB port or using some GPIO uh, female header connectors and connecting that directly. Now I chose to solder to the GPIO and that will keep it all nice and tight and since this is a permanent installation and I won't be using the Pi for anything else, I want reliable connection. I want loose connectors that can jiggle around because I move the 3D printer around a lot. This is another case of do as I say and not as I do. I ended up needing to button the printer up very quickly, and so I just have the wires coming out of the bottom between the plate and the base. This is a pinch point. This will wear over time, and since this is a metal case, you could end up shorting out these cables. What I would suggest doing is drilling a small hole for the cables to come out of the 3D printer or find an existing hole that won't be interfered with by the mechanics of the printer. Run the cables through that, 
preferably with a gland or some kind of uh, uh, 3D printed fitting to prevent the cables from being snagged on any sharp metal bits. And then you can mount the butt converter to the outside of your 3D printer using a 3D printed case. Personally, I'm using the XL4015 brackets by Caliconfused on Thingiverse. And I'm also going to be using the simple case for Raspberry Pi 3B by Sungi Kim. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Uh, also on Thingiverse. I'll have both of these linked down below. Now, these are just existing cases that fit my needs with minimal modifications. Uh, I could have gone through and catted something special, but these do the job and save a bunch of time. You're not going to see them very often anyway. I love being able to upgrade the device using the device itself. It's one of the main reasons I've gotten into 3D printing. Originally, I had built a RepRap and was doing constant upgrades printed on the RepRap. And now that we have our cases printed, all we have to do is button everything up and use some double-sided tape or Velcro or magnets even, if you wanted to, and mount the cases to the outside of the 3D printer in a place they won't get interfered with. Keep in mind that in the future, we're going to be adding a camera to this setup. So you wanna leave access to the cable connector and be cognizant of where you want that cable, camera cable routing if you're going to be following along with that part of the series. Other than that, you now have a self-sufficient 3D printer that has the power for the Pi all integrated. So you now only need one cable to power everything. Like I said, in the future, we're going to be doing more upgrades to this printer, a camera, maybe a relay to automatically control power for safety cutoff reasons. If you have any suggestions for plugins or other modifications we should do for this 3D printer in future videos, make sure to leave them in a, the comment down below. Uh, for all the resources, the parts, the files used, uh, check out the description down below as well. You'll also find the previous series of videos linked down there as well. Thank you all for watching. I've been Glitch. This has been Hack5. Glitch out. Thanks for supporting Hack5. Find all our shows, community, and Pentest products at hack5.org.